Well, hello everybody and welcome to another episode. And today I'm out shooting this lens. This is the TT Artisan 50 millimeter F0.95. And if you want a lens that will give you maximum dreamy, creamy blur at pretty much any distance, any combination of camera to subject to background distances, well, this lens is it. This lens is a blur monster. So it's a 50 millimeter F0.95 lens. It's an APS-C lens. I'm using it today on the Fujifilm X-T3, but it's available in all of the popular APS-C mounts as well. It has quite an old school look, and you can see it's got this sort of scalloped uh, finish here for the, this is the focus ring at the back, and this has a scalloped grip. These are little cutouts, and the aperture ring has uh, a similar sort of grip on its edge. So that's quite an old school look. A lot of the old lenses had that look. I think that's quite nice. It's a bit of an homage to lenses of the past. Uh, I think quite a few of the East German lenses used to be finished this way, but also one or two of the Western lenses as well were finished in this way. So that's kind of nice to see a bit of an homage to uh, the old school lenses. One thing I've found about this lens in use, actually, one of the main things I've found is that the focus ring is a little difficult to find when you've got the camera to your eye. And I've often found myself grabbing the aperture ring as well. So that did take a little bit of time to get used to, although it's, you know, it's fairly easy with practice to find where the uh, uh, the separate rings are. Okay, what have I learned so far? Well, I've been shooting for a little while now, a couple of hours now, and it's a very bright sunny day. And one thing that I have found is that this lens is pretty sensitive to light, but not in a bad way. If it catches light, if it catches direct sunlight, it makes some beautiful reflections. You get a sort of prism split up color rainbow effect. You get circular uh, lens flare. So I really like that it gives this very pronounced lens flare. And in my opinion, it's a very aesthetically pleasing lens flare as well. Some lens flare is blooming off. Some lens flare just washes out the lens or it'll make an unpleasant looking sort of streak uh, of low contrast throughout the lens. Contrast does drop with this one, but it doesn't drop very much. It retains uh, pretty good contrast and at the same time it makes those really nice sort of prism effect lens flares. So yeah it, it is vulnerable to stray light but in a really good way if you don't like that then easy very easy to use a hood um, that's probably your best way with this lens if you're not keen on lens flare personally i regard it as something of a bonus i'm quite surprised by the lens's sharpness when it's shot wide open because at f0.95 this lens does have a very convincing degree of sharpness and it's a lot sharper, for example, than my old Olympus 55mm f1.2 is fully open. Um, that I found quite surprising. It really does record quite a lot of detail. It gives a sharp image. The only difficulty is when shooting at f.95 that your plane of focus is so very, very thin that it is hard to keep things in that area of maximum sharpness. And the closer you get to your subject, of course, the more difficult that becomes, the tinier and tinier that plane of focus becomes. I've been shooting um, some vegetation and plants and flowers this morning, amongst other things. And one difficulty I found was there is a slight breeze in here. One difficulty I found was that as soon as whatever I'm shooting moves a tiny little bit out of range, tiny little bit uh, out of that focus plane, then you're going to lose your focus 
pretty much straight away. But if you keep things within the focus plane and you focus accurately, it's a pretty sharp lens. Shot wide open, that is, at f0.95. Now, of course, it does get sharper when you stop it down as any lens will, and it becomes very, very sharp indeed when you stop it down to say f4 or f8. Uh, but pretty much all lenses will do that. The news here is that shot wide open, although the plane of focus is very thin, if you get your focus accurate, then yeah, this will make some pretty sharp images wide open. I've not had any difficulty shooting it on the street wide open and I've managed to find focus fairly quickly, fairly easily. It's got a pretty short focus throw of just over a third of a turn, so that does help in focusing quickly. Focus peaking is very, very useful in these situations. I don't think I could really use this lens on a mirrorless camera without peaking. Luckily, uh, we do have peak in these days and using that feature um, I've, I've really not found any difficulty shooting sharp images at f0.95 on the street and again that's quite a surprising um, thing to have happened I, I, I wasn't too sure whether I would be able to get sharp focus on the street just sort of impromptu shooting but as it turns out it's not difficult at all. I guess though the real standout feature of this lens and its sort of main unique point that it has over all the lenses is that massive aperture which enables you to make as much blur as you like and the blur it makes is really lovely. It's not perfect, I must admit. There are one or two harsh spots that I've found and occasionally it turns a little bit, what can I say, a little bit ill-defined. Um, but most of the time it's beautiful. It gives such lovely, soft... I just messed that up, didn't I? Right, I'll try again. It gives such lovely, soft, beautiful, creamy, dreamy blur, full of bubbles in the background from point light sources. And because it has such a big maximum aperture, such a wide maximum aperture, that blur persists over long distances. So you can be quite a far distance from your subjects and you'll still get blur in the background. That's the thing that most other lenses can't do, especially a 50mm lens. 50mm is not a terribly long focal length, so most 50mm lenses will not make the kind of blur that this lens will make. It persists over a very long range of distances, um, over a wide combination of subject to camera to background distances, and you're more or less guaranteed some blur with this lens if you shoot at f0.95. Now because it has that very wide aperture, it, sometimes it makes too much blur I've found. If you're very close to your subject, then all of the background is going to be totally washed out. You're not going to be able to see any detail and blur that washes out completely, washes out all detail completely, well I mean, it might as well not really be blur at all because, you know, there's no detail to define that blur, if you see what I mean. So what I've often found myself doing, if I'm shooting quite close to my subject, is just stop down a little bit to f2 or maybe even f1.4, but that will bring the blur back to a range where it's showing you some detail, some form. Not everything is totally washed out. So f.95 is not always suitable for those longer distance, uh, sorry, for those shorter distances. Sometimes it's better to just stop down that little bit. And that actually makes far nicer photographs than if you keep that aperture open. If you're very close to your subject, of course, 
if you're a fair distance away from your subject then you can open up the aperture and you get that blur back so this is a lens that will give you as I say blur at well a wide range of distances it seems to deal very nicely with colors as well I do love the color representation on this lens it renders colors beautifully I've been shooting on the X-T3 in uh, Velvia, that is Fujifilm's equivalent of Vivid, and in Provia, that is Fujifilm speak for standard. And using both of those uh, filters, I'm really getting very beautiful colour from this lens, helped by its very strong contrast. It is a high contrast lens. It gives very full colours, very rich colours, pumped up and saturated, which I must say is just how I like them. Now that's helped of course by this very beautiful bright sunlight that we have today. It may give slightly less striking colours in overcast conditions, but then all lenses and cameras will do that as well. But today we've got the benefit of very strong sunlight to really bring out the colours of this lens and I can say that you know check out the images for yourself colour is absolutely fantastic from this lens very nice indeed so all things considered then I'm really pleased with the way this lens has behaved today and I think it's a really nice little lens and a real good lens to use if you want maximum blur from your 50 millimeter lens. It's very, very nicely made. It's got very high contrast. It's got beautiful colors, very, very striking colors. And of course, it's got that beautiful background blur and that ability to make blur at not at quite at any distance, but certainly over a very much wider range of distances than you would get from your usual, uh, more standard 50mm lens. Even an f1.4 lens won't give you anything like the amount of blur that this one will. So yeah, a really nice little lens and great for using if you want that maximum blur. It's also very nicely made and it's got a design that's reminiscent of the old school lenses so i reckon there's a, a lot to like there i think that's a very very nice uh, little lens that makes some really great images so i guess that's about it for this time i'd like to thank as usual all our subscribers subscribers old subscribers new people who've been with the channel for a long time people who've just found the channel welcome and thank you to all the subscribers I'd also like to thank all of the patrons all the people who support the channel on patreon patrons old patrons new people have been with us for a long long time and people who have just joined and decided to support the channel and if you like the content on this channel and you would like to support it then you might consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash xenography so that's it from me for this time so i do hope you've enjoyed this episode please don't forget to like subscribe and ring that bell thing before you go and I will see you next time for some more scenography.